welcome back to another video on Gears Off Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a UFO, in case, you know, you're ever outside stargazing at night, and then you realized, wow, when you have CODs disabled, there's really nothing going on. Time to go build a UFO to mess with my friends. Well, if that's you, then you're in luck, because, fortunately, I'm going to be showing you how. However, before I begin, remember, please like and subscribe, and without further ado, on to the tutorial. For our palette, we're going to be using a futuristic palette that's pretty dark. Gray and cyan terracotta, well, gray concrete, will be used as some thick accents, with light gray concrete being the base. Then, for some lighting, we'll be using sea lanterns or verdant frog lights, Whichever one's more convenient, both of them work equally well, I'd say. But you might even want to experiment with ultra frog lights. And then some lime and white glass. Tinted or black glass could also work for the top part, but it's a little bit more mysterious if there's green. You know, more stereotypical depictions. Then, make sure that you are, you know, in the sky somewhere. A crashed UFO would have to be at an angle, which technically you could do, but I mean, it's going to be very tough. And you just want to put her up to your desired height. Once you've chosen your starting location, you want to build a circle around it, as this will be the thickest part of the UFO, which means it will be extending a couple blocks down and slightly more blocks up. From here, of course, just make a circle. I've provided a link to a circle generator in the description below. And basically the only guidelines is, it must be an odd number. If you have an even number, you're going to mess up the build a lot. Just make sure it's odd, I'm going to be doing 21 blocks. Now, we have ourselves a floating ring in the sky. And, you know, that's good. We want to thicken this outer ring to three blocks, and you can either do it completely thick, like on this side, or just round it out like this. Of course, it needs to be three blocks thick on all parts, and that is just going to be a constant. Once you do it, then you can start taking off small sections of each part, and putting some lime concrete behind it, along with a couple sea lanterns or so. This will provide some lighting, and, if done right, it makes sure that the UFO is nice and bright, so that way it can be seen even at night. Although, you know, UFOs are typically always in the low resolution, this one is going to be a little bit higher resolution because of this. Which means you might want to not add these if it wants to be stealthy. Now, the ring itself is finished, which gives us a foundation to build the rest of the build off of. But, there is one design choice you might want to consider. On some parts, I have the window like this, and you can see I use two sea lanterns, although frog lights also work. But, there's an alternative design where you separate them. So, what you do to separate them is punch out that window, split the window into two, and now it's a little bit different looking. Well, it's completely up to you which design you prefer. I'm going to go with the one window design having the cool 3D effect, but of course it's all up to you since it is your build. In the middle of this place, I've made a small dome where the cockpit goes, and we can see, well, it's centered. And there's a very important thing about having it centered, it provides us an easy way to build the rest of the hull, which means build the ring, then build the cockpit, and then you can do the hole really easily, and then later on we can just invert this, maybe make it a little bit larger, and we can do the same thing to make the bottom side easy. So that way we can do it all efficiently in a survival friendly way. But anyways, we just want to make sure there's some grey concrete around here, perhaps a little bit of it going up to provide a little bit of visible stability, but that's about it on that end. Once you have that, then punch out the light gray concrete you have in the middle. From here, we have our dome. And, well, 
two layers will do good if you have 21 block circle ring because you know that's roughly how high this should be although you might want to rebuild this to make it slightly larger because you can see 5x5 five five is admittedly quite small and having a small dome on this can seriously mess with the build but if you don't want to increase the size moving it down one will usually fix most of the problems by making sure that the dome doesn't appear too small for its size. Well, from here we have the top half of a UFO, and there really isn't much to say. UFOs are pretty simple builds, and as long as you follow simple procedures, you can easily build one. So, if you find this easy, you can tack on a couple extra things, such as extending the ring up one block, like this, just replacing the outermost circle of the next layer. You know, might look better, who knows. And some more things, you might want to put some accents just around. Some lime concrete will do good, there's already enough lighting. And then, once you're ready, literally just build the same thing, but upside down around this point right here. If you just mirror it without the glass, we already have all the room for the tractor beam, which is going to be probably the most annoying part to do in survival, considering, yes, you're going to have to be going to each layer, going wider and wider to build circles. Now, we have the top and bottom parts of the UFO roughly mirrored, and we can see I've made a couple small adjustments to the mid-ring, Although it's a little small, larger ones might look better. But using our UFO, we can now build the bottom part. And then, of course, we can have the tractor beam. Although you might want to make the bottom part smaller than the top, even though I said make them the same. Because if you have the bottom part too large, then your rings will end up too large and it will look unnatural. Therefore, build a smaller circle of gray concrete and put a couple blocks going downwards, kind of like the little prongs we have on top of here. We have the hole in the bottom of the UFO now, and what you want to do with this hole is, at the top of it, place down some lime concrete. Although, you do need to choose where you want your floor to be. And considering I want mine to be relatively high up, then just put it at the top if you want to do the same. Once you have your layer of lime concrete, put a layer of glass over it in order to give it a little bit more of a fog effect, as if you don't know what's going to be inside here. With bigger UFOs, this is a lot easier to pull off, and to make sure that it's well lit. If it's not well lit, then the effect fails. So you might need to include a couple sea lanterns on the inside like this in order to keep it well lit. The more, the better, although remember, its texture might not blend with the build the best. Once you layer it all with the lime and glass, then we can start building the actual tractor beam. Although, if yours is high up, you might want to skip this part. With the fog effect over this, now I'm actually going to not immediately do the tractor beam itself, because doing the interior, surprisingly, would be a lot better. Because if you're in creative, you could use a structure block to copy this. And if your UFO is too high to have one, might as well copy the part that you can. So that way you can place one lower down that can have one. Therefore, you want to go on the inside of this. No entrance needed. Although, if you really want one, you could potentially hide an iron door on one of the sides, or an iron trap door. You place down some light gray concrete walls with some cyan terracotta trim. So, getting that. When the bottom layer is cyan terracotta, you might want to do the same thing with outlining the floor. And otherwise, it's a simple part. Then, you can place a chair in the middle made with iron trap doors and maybe a painting to act as like a display, you know? And then your interior is basically done. A basic interior is done. 
and I had to make a custom chair using a lot of smooth quartz stairs because turns out you can't exactly build a chair with just iron trapdoors without a debug stick, and I tried to keep these survival friendly. Therefore, we just have a nice desk, there's an armor stand wearing a chainmail helmet, and I was able to get it there by putting the armor stand down and then putting the concrete powder so that way it falls and then solidifying it there so that way it forms on top of it. We got some amethyst and rods and a map of a military base, you know, whenever you want to fly over and do a little bit of tomfoolery in front of the authorities, you know, things that a UFO would do. And if you don't want a tractor beam, then this part is done. Well, this entire build. So setting it to a nice midnight, and we can see it's nice and bright. Of course, it's not very stealthy, and it's of course going to appear in a lot higher video quality than like 99% of UFO sightings, but still. But if you do want a tractor beam, make sure yours is within 30 or so blocks of the ground, because this is too high. Going somewhere around this top of the Steve statue would be a much better height if you wanted a tractor beam. Now, I've created a swarm of small UFOs. If you have one larger one, then this is unnecessary, or you just kind of have to lower it to have the tractor beam. But from here, we go down to the middle of the UFO, should be clearly defined at this point. And we used a circle generator I provided in the description below in order to make circles that are consistently getting larger the closer they are to the ground. To start off kind of small like this, you know, just a square with rounded corners as in a 3x3 three three circle, but one block down will up the height. And whenever we do this, well, it gets larger and the closer to the ground it gets. If you're farther away, you might want to have two or three blocks in between, but otherwise, this works pretty good. But remember, if the tractor beam is exceeding the width of the UFO by about three blocks, that's a sign that your rings are too large and you need more spacing. Our rings are now in place, and it's clearly visible that this UFO is trying to abduct something. Putting this over a build, such as a small house. I'm not going to teach you guys how to do that because I've made so many house tutorials, but building a small house is pretty nice. Or you can have a cow pen, something to, you know, have it suck up. But since that's ambiguous, I'm not going to show you how to do that part, but rather something much more fascinating, end rods. So I'm just going to be using set block for this because, you know, it's just going to be easier for me. And if you're in creative mode, you can do the same for survival. Scaffolding will help a ton. So end rod here end rod here. And as I start placing the end rods, it does a couple of things. It lights up the area, but it also gives more of the illusion that it's indeed pulling something up. So once you get 10 or so, this isn't perfect yet, but of course, looking back, it looks like it's pulling something up, as if it's like the wind getting sucked into the saucer. So, with enough of those, your build will be finished, and you will have a UFO, or multiple of them, flying over your world to fill in the very empty sky. End rods now in place, with a small house being vacuumed up, you know, when you're minding your own business and a UFO comes up and steals your house, can't have nothing in Detroit. You know, it's always a nice sight. So, I'd call this build done, and you know, fills up the empty night sky. And, if you're really wanting to do that, you could make this into a base. You know, having a collection of them in the sky, or just one really large one. Although the large one's probably the better choice. Still, it's an interesting build, and, of course, fills up the empty sky. So, if you have a little bit of spare time, and you have an elytra, or some other way to prevent fall damage, then try it out on your survival world. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. But, either way, enjoy the rest of your day, and your new UFO, Gearsaw, out.